maybe um how can i say uh i really dc sometimes and uh, the students may not notice their progress and they just leave the language as they have okay so do you mm -hmm. what are your suggestion is it useful to i don't know visit another country what like um an english country if you go to england is it nice for uh intermediate or a beginner because we know for advanced is is of course is they it's a nice way to practice but for beginners mm -hmm. and intermediate is it a nice way to practice to like visit another country um i think you have to be careful because you can go to another country <laughs> and not actually learn anything right especially nowadays you can go abroad and you can spend the whole time on your phone talking to your family and friends and not actually using the language um i think honestly if you can create an immersion environment if you're at an intermediate level and you want to get to advanced you want to immerse yourself but you can do that online you know you can read and watch tv shows for several hours a day you can find conversation partners because if you're say i go to france it's not like i'm speaking french the whole time unless i like find someone on the street and like make them speak french with me you know i either i know people who i speak french with or i'm using it in i'm reading and listening and i can do that at home as well so i don't think traveling is always the best way it is it is one way if you live somewhere and you are immersed you're actually taking part in the society so you're working or studying that's different but in certainly going on holiday um i don't think i didn't it can be a very good way of getting more practice and exposure but it's also a very expensive way of doing it yeah. i think yeah I, I don't I don't mind going to America and spend that one thousand four hundred euros for a ticket, so it's not a great way. You just listen to the podcast which is free. So, exactly. Okay. Is English going to be the most spoken language of all time? You know the mm. time English is spreading so much. But still, Chinese is one of the most spoken <laughs> because of the number of people. But also, Chinese students, as I am a teacher for Chinese students and I do teach online, they're going to change their mind and accept the English as one of the most spoken language. Is it a positive thing or a negative thing? Hmm. Um. Well, I don't know if English will continue to grow as it is. Um, because historically, whenever there's been one powerful language, and it's happened several times through history, right? There was Latin, um, in China, there was classical Chinese, um, there are some, uh, I, okay, my, my knowledge of history isn't fantastic, but there, <laughs> there, have always, there have always been these really powerful languages, and in the past, they've always grown and then fallen. So I do I think the same could could happen to English and actually what I see when I teach like I I I've taught quite a few Chinese students who they have English forced on them in school from a very young age and so they just hate it they don't want to do anything in English they don't want any they 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 kind of just end up hating the language and the culture and I think that's natural if a language is forced on people there are always people who don't want to learn it or they have a negative experience so i think if teaching continues the way it is then it could be a problem um for english as a as a second language but um i guess my feeling you know okay i speak esperanto which is a constructed international language i did an episode about it uh, the boy who hoped um yeah yeah and i don't think it's good for any one national language whether it be english or chinese or french to be the world language in the way that it is now i don't think it has to be a negative thing but at the moment there's a lot of there are a lot of places where like for example in america mexican immigrants feel like 
their, their children stop speaking Spanish because they want to assimilate. And I think that's a really big problem. So um, I think, but I think there is a lot to be, there's a lot of richness you get, right? Like when you, when, when I started learning Spanish, it's like I got access to all of this culture in Latin America and Spain. And that's a good thing. Like, I don't want that to go away for people who learn English and then can, you know, travel to America and the UK and stuff. So I think it's it's complicated. Like with all things, there are going to be some positives and some negatives. Okay, thank you so much. But I'm curious about one thing. You now are studying Spanish, as you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. So I want to know, uh, I do teach English too, and I use a lot of different methods. I detach from textbooks. And there is one thing I call, which is still a mystery to me, which is the big step. That's what I call. And that's the point when I realized, for example, that I could fluently speak English. But it was, mm -hmm. a pro it was a long process, but there was one moment when I realized mm -hmm. I could be able to speak uh, a second language fluently. So two things. I want to hear uh, you speaking English. I want to hear you speaking English, uh, sorry, Spanish. I got mm -hmm. sorry, my nephew entering in the room, I will cut his ass. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I, it, you can use screams outside, it's just my nephew. Okay. Okay. <laughs> got kicked away. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so I want, to hear, I want you to speak Spanish a bit. And I want you to know if you have stepped out the big step <laughs> and you realize that you can speak Spanish fluently, and when do you notice it? Uh, is it because of you can practice without you know being tired of it? Is because is that mm, is controlled by the passion you apply in it? What is the big with this mysterious big step? Do you want me to answer all of that in Spanish or speak uh, no, a little no, no, Spanish? No, no, just speak a little Spanish and then. Oh, answer. okay. <laughs> because people want. Pues, I... llevo dos años y medio más o menos estudiando español y. Eh, sí, que lo estudié principalmente leyendo. Es que leo muchos libros de, Latina, de América Latina, algunos de España. Uh, me, me encanta la serie Aquí no hay quien vida. Es fenomenal. Y el, año, um, el mes que viene, en noviembre, voy a hacer el examen uh, del F2, que es el examen más alto de proficiencia en la lengua española. Beautiful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, now that's that's the way that's what I talk, was talking about. So now when you notice in a, in a certain point of the practice, which is basically on something, on everything you learn, what is how would you define this big step? The point when you uh, have no idea from what you're doing and the point you are like treating it like you're, you've always mm. known how to speak Spanish or how to do anything. So how would you describe this big step? Mm. I felt I felt the big step a lot when I learned German, for example. I haven't actually felt it that much with Spanish. And I think it might be because I've been studying very intensely. Like the last two years, I've been studying Spanish at least an hour every day, some days two or three hours. So I haven't had maybe such a slow build as you might normally get. But um, I've definitely had a step recently where, so I've been reading Game of Thrones in Spanish. Oh my God. And it's a <laughs> difficult book. It's really long. It's got lots of archaic words. They're always using vosotros because it's like formal in yeah. old Spanish. Um, and at the beginning, so the last Game of Thrones book I read, uh, it took me like four months to read it in Spanish. It was so slow. But now I'm reading the next one and it's just a lot faster. And I can read actually, I can read not not the same speed in English, but pretty close. Um, I have to look up some words, but I can read fast if I focus hard. And that was like, okay, that's a step. And also I think um, I have a friend from Madrid and people from Madrid speak like a bullet train. They just get, bah, 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 bah. they speak so quickly. <laughs> And at the beginning, I was just like, she was like, blah, 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 blah. I was like, oh my God, I couldn't, it's like, ever, I cannot understand a word you're saying. 
And it, I think it was when I started to be able to understand her well without, and you know, I didn't get exhausted just from one conversation because I was trying so hard. Whereas, like, okay, I've I've arrived. I've made that big step. So yeah. Okay, same here. Uh, it was when I first uh, met met her later. It was in two thousand fourteen, and I realized all the years spent the learning English school was all in the trash. <laughs> in that moment, <laughs> I realized actually speaking to a native was a, a shock for me at all. So it was like the day moment that I realized that my brain, something in my brain changed. So I really think that speaking with a native that it really comprehend the the way of learning, the way that people learn and the way that people learn language, which is a really totally new field. And people are still studying about it. And in that moment, I realized, okay, I need to change. I need to change my method. And I really think, uh, in my experience, uh, learning English, um, applying it to things you really like um, is mm. a game changer so much. because. Absolutely. Then maybe I really enjoy, I'm not saying just because I'm talking to you, but they really enjoy your stories. And I'm not like, you know, a reader and I don't like a lot of reading stories, but I really appreciate the way you um, actually give uh, in small pills those stories. And I really appreciate this way. So before we end, I want you to suggest mm -hmm. the students that uh, they may be yours. Uh, if you'd like to sponsor this podcast next in two or three days that will come out. Uh, and my students, which are the best way you would suggest for for learning? Uh, if you could give, of course, except for your podcast, um, mm -hmm. three or four things you should do uh, to understand your progress and suggestion for, for learning any languages. Indeed, it's not only about English. So, mm -hmm. I think try to start reading early because I studied Japanese for so many years and I kept and I bought some novels in Japanese and I was like oh these are so hard I can't read them but one day I'll be able to read them and I kept studying vocabulary and I kept studying grammar and I still couldn't read and I eventually just got to the point where I realized the only way I can read these books is to just start reading and look up words I don't know. And it was horrible. It was so painful. But once I built up that fluency in reading, it became a lot easier. And luckily for English and a lot of languages like French and Spanish, there are a lot of resources. So go on Google and look up graded readers and then the language you're learning. So graded readers, English, graded readers, Spanish. Graded readers, similar to my podcast, they're books that are in the language, but the language is simplified. So there are beginner level graded readers, intermediate and advanced, um, but they're longer, right? Some of them are entire novels, like 40,000 words, because if you do slightly longer reading, that's when you really start to improve a lot. Um, and I would also say, um, again, yeah, follow, like you said, of course, follow your interests. Find a TV show that you love, okay, in the target language. Um, for me, it was this one in Spanish, Aquí no hay quien viva. Um, I also found this incredibly cheesy Argentinian Netflix show called Go, Vive Tu Manera, which is like the Argentinian version of High School Musical. And it's <laughs> so bad, but it was such easy watching and I quite liked it that I could just like, I just watched the whole thing. So um, it doesn't matter if it feels like super easy or you don't feel like it's serious. If you find something that you really enjoy in the target language, just follow that. And like I had a student who um, came from China and he came to study in the UK and he uh, had he had been at a, school, a private school. Actually, he listens to the podcast a lot. So Davey, if you're listening to this, hello. <laughs> um, so he um, he came and he had been studying in a very traditional school with a lot of like classes where you know the students didn't didn't guide their own learning right and then he came here and i taught him and i 
did loads of stories with him and he started listening to the podcast and he listens to every episode and he reads novels in his free time and I have seen his English improve hugely over just like half a year. It was such an amazing improvement. And the best thing is that he now, he is in control of his learning. He is learning because he wants to. And that's the that's the most important thing. Don't, you know, find, find ways of learning that interest you, that will continue to interest you, and that you are taking control of. Don't just say, oh, I want to learn. Okay, italki is fantastic, but don't just say, oh, I want to learn more English. I'll just go on italki. You've got to, you've got to find ways to teach yourself as well, because that's what will make you a lifetime language learner, I think. Thank you so also, much. Also, I'll yes. just quickly say, yeah. this is, you can cut this out, okay? Because this is no, technically no, not legal. No. <laughs> There's a website called English eReader. So english-e-reader.net. And it has graded readers in English for all levels, their ebooks, and they're completely free. I'm sure it's illegal because I think they must have been downloaded from somewhere. <laughs> but it's such a good resource that I recommend it to all my students. So, all the pirates that are listening to these, please don't. <laughs> 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 okay, exactly. beautiful. Okay, thank you so much. We really hope uh, Ariel is going to post my story on advanced story. This is my disclaimer because I finished all the stories in advance. Come on, I'm waiting for these <laughs> stories. I, I am forced <gasps> to listen to intermediate now. Are you joking? <laughs> okay, we are all still waiting and thank you so much for the service you're really doing and you're really surely improving. And my students are really, really appreciating it and really, will really yeah. love to listen to you and your experience behind it, which is a really thing is a, is a cool story. Okay, you will find this podcast on YouTube. Again, YouTube, Y O U T U P. Quoting. That's youtube.com. <laughs> That's true. And I remind you to visit his website, Easy Stories in English. Can you spell it out? All in a row. Come on. <laughs> This is the embarrassing part, right? Because when I record the episodes, I always mess up the spellings. I am really bad at spelling things out when I'm saying them. So I'm probably going to get this wrong, but let me try. Um, e A S Y I -S No. <laughs> 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 It's that um, E A S Y S T O R I E S I N E N G L I S H dot com. Did it? Okay. Oh god, <laughs> that was really that was really challenging though. <laughs> It's the hardest part of every episode. <laughs> I really appreciate also your ideas before it. And that's a really cool way, you know, it's really it's rather passive actually. It really means that you really love what you're doing. So expressing mm -hmm. ideas, it's it's really a cool way because it's it's a conversation starter. And I really have to say, and I will donate to your Patreon because I really use oh. your stories. I, and I remind you all to visit the website, donate to the Patreon, that we really help them continuing. Mm -hmm. And and, yeah. and I really use your starter conversation as a topic of one of my mm -hmm. lessons I use like yeah. all the time. And, and come comment on the episodes. I have these lovely conversations. People keep commenting and writing me emails and like telling me like, oh, I love this. The other day I had this guy from Colombia and he like, he clearly discovered the podcast and then listened to about 10 episodes because he commented on like five episodes. Like, I love it. Oh, I love it. This is great. And I was like, oh, so yeah, I love it. Just give, give me comments. It's great. Give me, <laughs> throw me everything you have. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. That's lovely. Hey, Roy, thank you so much, Ariel, for joining my podcast today. You really helped me so much, and I really, I'm really sure your students and my students will really appreciate this conversation. And it's been lovely, also for me, and it's really been a really entertaining listening to your stories. And I really hope you will continue posting stories on advance because I'm still waiting. And I will. Okay. <laughs> well, if enough people donate to the Patreon. I can do two episodes a week. 
Guys, so... <laughs> you imagine? Just form a Patreon a donation, and <laughs> and you will satisfy me and him on <laughs> on keep on doing it, stories. Thank you so much, Ariel. And I really hope you enjoyed everybody the stories. You will find the story on our YouTube channel on language exchange, and surely he will share it on his Facebook page. And so thank you so much for joining again, and I hope you to see you on EnglishStories.com. Thank you so much. I had a great time. It was very fun. Thank you.